الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بار حبت فی اللہ Continuing on in our study of An-Nasiha by Shaykhana Shaykh Ibrahim Rahili Hafizullahu Ta'ala we reach the ninth point and in this point there's some very important uh, masail or issues that come up which we have referenced all throughout this uh, study of this treatise and we talked about it prior to this in other many other uh, lectures as well as our study of this treatise, treatise uh, prior to this. And so it is very important that we understand the maqsad, the maqsad referring to the purpose of this treatise and that this treatise was written to deal with fitna between Ahl Sunnah and to deal with uh, trials and tribulations and problems that arises between the youth of Ahl Sunnah and all the other and the issues of boycotting and cutting one another off regarding differences in uh, scholars and differences uh, in position regarding a particular issue or differences in uh, making a judgment about a particular individual or a judgment about a particular uh, issue. And so this treatise, as I said, was written to deal with the issues of uh, between Ahl Sunnah. And likewise, uh, our scholar Imam Abdul Masan al Abad in his treatise was also written for the same thing. And unfortunately, many people criticized that, that treatise as well and <clears throat> said it was Mumayya, said it was, um, you know, weakening the principles of Ahl Sunnah and so on and so forth for all the various arguments. But however, it seems very strange to me that many of the people, especially those who were people of knowledge that would criticize, would miss the point that was always very clear in the treaties, in both of these treatises, that they are ilaj for what has transpired between Ahl Sunnah. Now, whether you disagree with uh, their positions on certain uh Masail, and especially in the case of Imam Abdul Masan al Abad in his treatise, Ar Rifq, uh, the gentleness between Ahl Sunnah, uh, in that he mentions specific individuals who uh, many of our other ulama uh, have criticized. And he said that, you know, maybe they have mistakes, but however, they are from, they have not left the fold of Ahl Sunnah. So this is where a lot of the uh, discord happened with regards to his treaties. Another treaties I want to hi highlight and hi uh, highlight uh, and emphasize for its great value that was also extremely criticized by some uh, students of knowledge and some, uh, the only scholar that I know, uh, and there was issues there, was uh, Yahya al-Hujuri criticizing it. But the treaties is the treaties of our Sheikh, meaning our Sheikh in general, one of the Mashaykh of Ahl Sunnah, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Al Imam, Hafizullah Ta'ala, who is a scholar in Yemen, a scholar in the province of Ma'bar, and Dar al Hadith in Ma'bar. And his treaties, known, uh, which it refers to Ibana, is also another fantastic treaties, which is talking about the issue, some of these same Messiah and how, how Ahl Sunnah should deal with differences between them. And then there's many other ulama that have written about this topic, but those are some of the, in, in contemporary times, some of the most important and uh, earlier treaties regarding some of the more contemporary fitna. So moving on, but most of those treaties, all of those treaties are in Arabic and except, but, uh, and the Seha, this treatise as we're studying, is in English, and you can get that uh, from the web, as well as the uh, um, Imam Abdul Masin's treatise also has been translated in English, and I believe on Medina.com and some other websites. So those two treatises, Walillah Alhamd, are in English, and they are still so relevant and valuable because the same issues are still going on. And in fact, unfortunately, even with all of this uh, striving by the ulama, to deal with some of the fitna, uh, 
you know, new fitna just manifests itself and new ways to cut one another off to such a degree that the splits now, it is things we would not have uh, imagined, uh, perhaps even just a year ago, or especially a few years ago, that certain ulama would criticize other ulama that are known for the sunnah and sometimes over uh, subsidiary issues, you know, minor or fiqh, uh, maybe masail fiqhi and how it's been, uh, uh, a ruling has been applied to a particular individual and things like this, which has caused immense discord. And this is why we're in need of this ilaj. And I encourage you as youth to read these treatises and to understand these treatises, study them if it, wherever they've been taught and take the benefit from these great treatises. So the Sheikh, moving on into the treaties, we reach the ninth point. The people of innovation who have opposed Ahl Sunnah and their menhaj when it comes to textual deduction, education, teaching, and calling to Allah follow their desires and do not establish their knowledge and principles by following the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. Rather, they belittle and slander them and consider themselves to be more virtuous than them. These are the true people of bid'ah and deviance, and it is imperative that we combat them by drawing people's attention to their evil path and deviance from the sunnah in order to refute their misconceptions and to deal with them in a manner that is appropriate for the people of innovation to be dealt with in all circumstances. But this does not prevent them from being invited to the truth and for the ulama to debate with them in ways that will produce the best results if this will be more effective in their return to the sunnah. So there's a couple of very important points that the Shaykh is mentioning here. First and foremost is that, you know, that there's um, not just a value, but the shara. You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us to call people to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that the da'wah, we shouldn't close the da'wah even to ahl bid'ah, because how is it we could go to, we, we know the value and the maqsad of the shara, you know, the intent of the shara, calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning calling the disbelievers, calling the mushrikeen, people who worship rocks, stones, and rats even, and people who worship Jesus, people who worship uh, all, all kind of uh, deities and false deities, and tagut, and so on and so forth, that if the shara not only allows, but encourages, and that is the asl, is to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then of course that means we call Ahl bidah So this is one of the important uh, maqasid that many of the youth have missed. And I want you to take heed. For those few that are listening, please take heed and take these principles that, you know, da'wah is for everyone. And that when we even make tatbik and we try to uh, practice these messiah of hajr and you know cutting someone off and boycotting and and um, criticizing individuals and so forth you know there should be a sharia maqsad you know there should be masalih there should be benefit in doing that and one of the objectives one of the objectives not always the only objective not always uh the case but one of the objectives for doing that is calling the people back from their mistakes so we want good for those people who we criticize those people from ahl bid'a we want good for them and then what about even more so the people from ahl sunnah we want good for them we want them to come back if they have made a mistake, if someone has fallen into error, you want you should want good for them. You shouldn't be quick to jump and curse and attack and belittle them and disparage them, but rather you should be quick to want to call them to the truth, to advise them. That's this whole point of this treaty. What is this treaty called in Arabic? an It is called, you know, advice. Advice for the youth. It's advice for the Shabab to bring them back for their, their mistakes and their and and uh, you know and to, to rectify their their situation, but it shouldn't be a, a cause for greater division. So what you see, and I'll give you an example. I just read recently where it was sent to me because I don't follow those things. I don't follow up, uh, especially in the English speaking world. But perhaps maybe it's useful. Maybe I need to to be more in touch. But I I have enough people who uh, often send me. Uh, things that are going on in fitna, and in one situation, particular Dai who's all who's been criticized for years, uh, you know, and some 
masjid or masajid that are that claim salafia are <clears throat> you know very vigilant in attacking him what's noteworthy is you see that they're always following this individual's facebook his youtube his anything that he does they're up on it so it's like that is a part of their job you know i me i, I don't see how you can have time to follow up every, every mistake. I thought you dealt with it years ago, but you're still, it shows that he's still relevant and still maybe perhaps a threat or there's still jealousy or there's still hatred, whatever the case may be. There's some reason you're still following the man's mistakes every single kelima, every time he gives a lecture. So that's very interesting. Uh, with, that, with that being the case, so you see that uh, a particular masjid, they made a ban, of course, and they put it on the internet and said, and they named all of these other du'a, du'a to sunnah, du'a to sunnah in, the, in America. And they said, look again, and we know you're going to be silent about this particular individual's deviance and his most recent deviance. And, da, 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 da. and they named all of these individuals. Where's the nasiha? Where is the value in that? That is only, it doesn't seem like there's any maqsid of the shara. Never. Because how is it you could take out like 10 du'a? that are known for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and criticize them with simple, simple statements. Simple statements. You know, and say, oh, you're, you know, we know you're going to continue to be quiet about so-and-so's mistakes. Instead of, why don't, if you're man enough, you know, and call them individually or whatever the case may be. But it shows the ongoing enmity, the need for mu'allaja, the need for healing, the need for cleaning the intentions, for cleaning up and coming back to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because I don't know where these principles are coming from. I, in fact, I partially do. But, you know, when you see the major scholars and what they left for us and the Salaf al-Salih, we don't see this kind of behavior, really, except for in rare situations. And you see sometimes a similarity between people's uh, extreme tibdi, you know, of making tibdi and calling everybody an innovator, innovator uh, and quick for innovation for every mistake or everything they perceive to be a mistake. And notice that's two masail. The first mesala is if someone has made a real mistake. The second mesala is if you perceive someone has done a mistake and maybe they haven't even done a mistake. Maybe you're the one who's mistaken. So those are two separate issues. And a lot of times we see all of those things at play. But you see people making ahkam, they're making rulings and judgments and warning whole communities and destroying whole communities and separating uh, people based on these messiah. And this is exactly why this treatise was written to kind of to, as a advice to the youth to, hey, slow it down and keep away from this fitna and keep away from propagating this fitna. And uh, so as I mentioned, that was one of the reasons in general that this treaties uh, are a, a, a benefit and is 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 a and that the this the maqsad of this treaties, the intent of this treaties was to deal with fitna between Ahl Sunnah. And another important benefit just from this paragraph that we have to contemplate and 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 think about is that uh as Sheikh Ibrahim used to always tell us, uh, and, and I remember in his treatise, uh, which is his PhD thesis, it's two volumes, called Mokif Ahl Sunnah Min Ahl Bidal Wa Ahwa. You know, it's the, the position of Ahl Sunnah uh, regarding Ahl Bid'ah Wa Ahwa and the, pe the people of desires. So it's talking about all the Ahkam or many different major messiah of how to deal with Ahl Bid'ah. Can you pray behind them? Can you eat the Dabiha? Uh, takfir of them, uh, hajr of them, all these masail which are you'll find in the books of fiqh, you'll find in the in the books of aqidah and in, in the practices of the salaf al -Salih. So he detailed this in two volumes. This is his PhD thesis, and when we studied that, one of the principles, one of the things that he mentioned, and unfortunately you don't hear this from some other, you don't hear this from students of knowledge, some of the students of knowledge and stuff. You just see everything black and white, but. Is that he used to say that Ahl Bid'ah Tafawit wa Ahl Sunnah Tafawit. That Ahl Bid'ah, and it would seem like that would be common sense, that Ahl Bid'ah, they have different levels. Ahl Sunnah has different levels, meaning so you don't say uh, uh, the general people from Ahl Sunnah that are from the Awam, the general, the lay persons, is not like the student of knowledge, who in turn is not like the Alam. You know, their level of knowledge, their practice, their understanding, and their responsibilities are different. 
They have different levels, and so that means they have different levels of adherence to the sunnah and different benefit and different uh, superiority, if you will. Likewise, Ahl bid'ah, they tafaw it. And that's what I want to point out from this, just this paragraph before we get into uh, the next lesson, is that Ahl bid'ah tafaw it. They have different levels. So we don't say someone who has fallen into a, a, some minor issue, he fought, fell into something with regards to tekfir. And we're talking about minor. I'm not talking about somebody who's minhaj. Their methodology totally is that they're a tekfiri. Well, we don't treat them in deal with them necessarily as someone whose whole methodology is, is that they're a pure tekfiri, for example. Or the one who is a jahmiya, you know, who is who says the Quran was created and, and has all kind of major, perhaps even bid'ah mukaffara, bid'ah that takes them out of the fold of Islam. We don't deal with them in the same way as someone who maybe has some light to sow with. You know, they have some light, some mistakes in uh, Sufi uh, you know, some masail that is muafaka or in accordance with um, a particular Sufi tariqa or uh, or creed, but yet it doesn't take them out of the fold of Islam. So the point being is that they have different levels. People have different levels of deviance and different levels of adherence to the sunnah. That's imperative. And, and that's imperative for the one making judgments about individuals to have that insight. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And until the next sitting, we'll sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.